That smile is gonna get you married. I mean, in trouble, sir. I sense a potential Yandere boyfriend. Crap, I lost my page. Darn it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and today I'm going to play a game called Broken Colors. A game where we're just minding our business and going about our mundane day when all of a sudden, uh, somebody turns out to like us a little bit too much. Now hold on. This game is meant for adult audience and will have many triggering things within. This day one demo is safe for work, however, this game was made with adults in mind. So let's see what trouble we can get into today. <laughs> or what trouble will find us. This erotic horror game contains disturbing themes such as rape, gore, drug abuse, stalking, torture, suicide, depression, mobbing, Stockholm Syndrome, as well as graphic sexual content. This is a work of fiction intended for a mature 18 audience only. Oh. Well, isn't that lovely? We're off to a, off to a great start. Oh no, I just remember reading that there's jump scares. Oh no! When you came into this world, what name was given to you? Well, I, I can't really give you that name, but I can give you the name that I've been using as a moniker on the interwebs. Espoir. It means hope in French. Wonderful. Let's see where your path will take you in this dark, unsteady world. Okay, mysterious voice. Oh. My outstretched hand feels its way forward to the source of the alarm until it finds the snooze button and the alert comes to a stop. I yawn and roll on my side, curling up into a ball. I'm already snoring when it sounds again, louder this time. All right already! I groan at the thought of leaving the comfort of my cozy bed. All right, all right, I'm awake. Knowing that I would have to skip lunch if I wasted any more time now, I let out a defeated sigh and pull myself up into a sitting position to switch the alarm off. I put my phone back onto the bedside table, but as hard as I try to make it casual, it takes all my energy to swing my legs over the side without falling backwards. Ugh. I stop moving and allow myself a few seconds to let the day come softly into focus, even if I can hardly keep my eyes open. My whole body feels like it's been hit by a truck. Is that what they call fatigue syndrome? I swear it's been getting harder to fight off every day. No, that's, that's just getting old. <laughs> Putting my hands on either side of me, I grunt as I finally push myself off the bed completely. I feel my feet still ache from the previous day's work as I stumble towards my closet, wiping the sleep from my eyes, and in an almost robotic fashion, put on a sleeveless blouse and a skirt, whichever is conveniently residing at the top of the pile. <laughs> the summer sun shines brightly through the grubby windows of my apartment, filling me with more unnecessary warmth. I close my eyes and bring my arms back behind my head, stretching. Another yawn escapes my throat as I head into the kitchen, only to be faced with an almost empty fridge. Right. I had to get rid of most of my food after the last power outage. Can't eat well if you're late paying the electricity bill. Oh, jeez. Oh. In these visual novels games I play, like, oh, jeez, everyone's so hard on their luck and they don't eat properly. I decide to make myself a chicken salad sandwich and a mountain note to do some grocery shopping tomorrow. Or maybe I should not only do it mentally, but also write it down. Yes, espoir. Write it down. No! You do it now! You write it down now, espoir! You know how you are! <laughs> how dare you, espoir! Don't sub it! Ah! You! What are you doing here? I know it's more of a running gag on my adult Patreon, but I don't like strayed from boyfriend to death. Mmm, how dare he! The first time I played it on my own, he, uh put nails in my legs and I didn't like it. <laughs> Boyfriend to Death is a very difficult game. <laughs> but straight is really hot. But I hate him. But I like him. But I hate him. But I like him. He's hot. But I hate him. The soft crackling sound under my chair reminds me of the dried leaves that had been scattered all over the floor by a strong draft the other day. And are the sad result. And are the sad result of my neglected mint plant. Oh no. Not the mint plant. And whatever that thing is, it's adorable. I want 20 of them. 
And mind you, accidentally killing it is not an easy task. Oh shoot, how could I forget to water you the whole time? Poor thing. While I throw pitying glances at it, I finish my lunch, then pick up some of the leaves, thinking about reviving my plant later, before rushing to get ready for another uneventful day at work. Cool! Look at all these cool side characters! I step outside into the scorching sun, feeling the same heat wave that has been keeping me sleepy and lethargic for the past few weeks. With squinting eyes, I look at the cloudless afternoon sky, its bright cocktail blue stretches on forever, giving me a moment of pure serenity. I take a deep breath and enjoy the summer breeze that brings along a dry wind, messing up my hair. Such a pretty afternoon. It's a shame I have to work today. Sighing, I put on my sunglasses and wiggle my way through the heavy traffic pouring in from a nearby expressway. Vehicles of all shapes, sizes, and colors bustle by, creating quite a din, yet one still could hear the humming sounds of bees darting through the air and the soft clinking of ice drinks from restaurants. I turn the next corner and get only a glimpse of the back of my co-worker's car, who has just finished his morning shift, before he takes off driving home to his family. My feet carry me to the building he had left, a small convenience store where I work as a cashier. Stopping in front of the staff entrance, I look for my keys, then grab the doorknob. Ouch! Only to feel my palm exploding in pain. Oh, is it hot? Is it a hot knob? Wait, no! I didn't mean it like that! <laughs> Darn it! Not again! I wave my hand as if to shake off that burning sensation. I wish we had more trees throwing some shade in this part of the city, or a new affordable entry door for that matter. One that also makes it easier for the air conditioner to run more efficiently. Speaking of, after using a handkerchief to protect myself somewhat from the intense heat of the door, I hurried inside and noticed only a slight difference in temperature. Aw, oh, so it's hot in there too? Aww. A not-so-pleasant thought crosses my mind. What if the AC is not working? I bet Rasmus will use that as an excuse to go home early. Ugh. Ugh, Rasmus, how dare you. While I make my way to the break room to fetch myself a drink, I find my co-worker already sitting there with his legs stretched out in front of him, his feet propped up on the table, and his arms resting behind his head, as if he had come to relax, not to work. As usual, he doesn't bother to look at me or greet me, and continues to ignore me until I have a glass of chilled juice in my hands. How dare you? How dare you look so cool and be so smug? Man, I could grow a beard just waiting for you. The AC is broken. What are you going to do about that? Yep, that's Rasmus, the spoiled, obnoxious son of the manager, whose favorite pastime is to constantly bully me. Unfortunately, I need the money, and can't afford to complain about it too much, even though his father's pretty nice to me. Well, except for his cruel jokes about us marrying one day. Rasmus and I are anything but a perfect match, really. Indignant at his reproachful remark, I stand next to the table, rest my other free hand on my hip, and glare at him. I see the corner of his mouth curling up, and I realize he's not the least bit intimidated by me. Sir? <laughs> How should I answer him? <laughs> well, a fine how-do-you-do, too, Raz. Stop being so cool-looking! Stop it! Stop! Yeah, whatever. Answer my question, Espoir. Is it really that hard to show some basic manners? Ugh. You sound like my flippin' step biscuit at home. If your goal is to tick me off today, you're on the right track. Oh! So are you saying... You mad? You mad, sir? Because I can make you mad. <laughs> Jeez, calm down. I'm not here to fight you. I could. Dude, you want to get punched in the mouth? No, actually, probably Espoir needs this job. But to waste my time... I am perplexed by his sudden anger, but it doesn't seem to be directed at me. Even if he's giving me a disapproving glare, he must have had another fight at home, and it wouldn't be my first time to be used as a lightning rod. Choosing to ignore his snide comment, for the moment, I pull up a chair, sit down, and take a sip of my drink. Shouldn't you keep an eye on the store? We don't have any customers right now. None of them will stick around if the AC is not getting fixed, including me. But you're gonna help me with that, right? Pfft, what makes you think I would? 
Because... I thought I could treat you to some salted caramel ice cream if you do. Mm. Aww. Wh what? I can't help but smile at the realization that my offer seems to have taken the wind out of sails for now. <laughs> he needs that ice cream. It's my first time doing something different to get his help, which I always have a tough time with. After all, Rasmus isn't exactly known to be a selfless Samaritan or anything like that. I mean, sure. Whatever. Let's go. Aww. Rasmus, we'll, we'll, we will be friends! Or you will get socked in the mouth! Wait, really? Yeah, are you coming or not? The fact that this has worked has caught me so off guard that he has to call me for a second time, threatening to change his mind, before I finally rise from my seat to follow him. I feel kind of dumb for not trying this sooner. Things could have been easier for me. Dang it. <laughs> Probably more like, DANG IT! But at the same time, it is ridiculous to what lengths I have to go just to get a little help from him. He's powered by ice cream. Unfortunately, he has always been like that. Bossy, condescending, even bitter about past events that may have been beyond his control. I notice that he speaks more of his stepmom than his actual mother, but I figure that she might be a topic he doesn't want to discuss, so I never brought it up. Besides, I doubt trying to get to know him better would change anything about our current relationship. Is that a subtle, uh, don't try to be his friend because it's not gonna work? Well, the joke's on you. I'm going to be everyone's friend. And then I'm probably gonna get kidnapped for that. After changing into my work clothes and shutting off the power to the cooling system, we removed the thick ice layers and freed the coil from dirt and dust, this time with Rasmus doing most of the work. He was more pleasant to be around whenever work distracted him from me, which often led to the illusion that we got along well. <laughs> Nobody would believe me whenever I complained about his bullying. People would just laugh and tell him to go easy on me, making him do the exact opposite. Once we're done, we return to the break room to wipe the sweat off our faces with a towel and take a moment to re-enjoy the cooler temperature. Phew. Now that's finally taken care of. Thank you, Raz. What would I ever do without you? Looking dirt, probably. <laughs> Rude. And just like that, my enthusiasm about his help is gone. <laughs> anyway... He glances at the clock on the wall, then back at me. Sir, you are pretty ripped. Very difficult to hate you right now. You better go back to the counter now. I'll check our inventory in the meantime. Okay, have fun with that. I just nod as he leaves, pouring myself another glass of juice before I follow him through the door and place it down next to the cash register. Ooh. There's still no customers, huh? Seems like it's going to be a slow day. Hmm. Depending on the season or day of the week, my job can be slow, hectic, stressful, or mind-numbingly boring and repetitive. It's also physically more demanding than some might think. Having to stand in one place all day is hard on my feet, knees, and back. I enjoy my job, though. Some of the most fun times involve chatting with the regulars. We would laugh, catch up, tease each other. I probably know more about their lives than their neighbors or even relatives. Of course, we also have customers who treat me like I'm something nasty on the bottom of their shoes. A couple of them could ruin my whole day. Sadly, it is expected of me to debase my self-worth to avoid responding back in a similar manner. <laughs> Milia, one of our regulars, isn't the type to say anything nice or even look remotely approachable. She usually just buys her cigarettes and leaves the store as fast as she came in. I remember how she got angry at me once for asking for her ID. It was scary as heck. And to this day, I don't know how I even survived her little outburst. But I like to think that she was just having a bad day, and isn't the mean kind. Venny, another regular, is pretty quiet on some days, even a bit awkward. He always buys energy drinks and avoids eye contact when talking to me. I once pointed out how rude I thought this kind of behavior was. Now he occasionally makes an effort to show me that he pays attention. I admit, I feel kind of bad about it, seeing how rarely he manages a smile. Makes me wonder how miserable his life must be. Aww. The other two well-known regulars are Gunther and Levy. 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 
<laughs> Holy golly! <coughs> Monsieur! Him! Him big! Sir! Big. Gunther isn't much of a talker, but he's too polite to not engage in some small talk. At first, I was a bit intimidated by his height and bulky stature. The wrinkles and the dark half-moons below his eyes didn't help to make him look any less scary, either. And he had yellow eyes! I kid you not! Yellow eyes! Funny enough, we both bonded later over our shared fear of dentist and love for cats. <gasps> and he likes kitties! Husband material right here. Oh no! Oh no! Why do all these characters look so cool and dateable? Wait, does he have a tail? Tail? Is he a, is he a snakey? I, I love him. I, can, can I marry them? Can I marry them both? Can I marry them all? Which one of these guys is gonna kidnap me? Levy is the kind of guy that gets you in a good mood as soon as he walks into the store. He's always smiling, greeting, and ready to share the latest rumors with me. He looks like fun. Me and Rasmus notice a chemical smell clinging to him that makes it obvious he's dealing with drugs. <gasps> you know who I am. I know snake. Dealing in weed, coke, crack, your choice. One of each, please. Do I look like the kind of guy that would do that to a kid like you? You look like a snake! Yes! It's so strange to think that some of our customers might be actual criminals. I don't think I'll ever get used to the fact that I moved to a city with a high crime rate. Gang fights, robberies, assassinations, and other attacks are part of some people's everyday lives here. Even our manager has trouble expanding his business without facing any territorial issues. It's crazy, really. Ooh. Luckily, the neighborhood I live in has been quite peaceful for years. However, I'd be lying if I said I didn't wish for a little excitement every now and then to combat my rather boring life. Espoir, don't say that. Don't say that. Look where you are. Look what kind of game this is. Don't say that. Still, no customers. My weary eyes wander to an open magazine that someone left on the counter. I pick it up. Ooh, pretty. Wow. I can't help admiring the beautiful young woman on the cover, who looks vaguely familiar. I might have seen her around somewhere before, or just remember seeing her in a different type of media. So pretty. This artwork is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, it's so gorgeous. Ah. She must be a popular model or a dancer. I wonder how it feels to get noticed by someone like her. My lips twist in self-mockery. Yeah, dream on, Espoir. I finally break away from her charming smile and start flipping through the magazine until I get stuck on a page with a fun-looking personality quiz. Uh-oh. I guess I could take it to kill some time. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh no. Hmm, you want to draw a landscape. Which color do you choose? Do they have purple? Violet. Question two. You have been blindfolded for a special surprise date. What will you see when your blindfold comes off? Hmm. Oh, these are nice. These are lovely. We're sitting on a roof terrace to have dinner under the starry night sky. Or we're standing on a pier at the beach and watch the fireworks show. Um, I like food, so we're having dinner under a starry night sky. <laughs> You've received a gift that you can use to complement your overall style. You open the box and find... Ooh, yes, a thin silver necklace with a Baroque pearl pendant. Yes, very fancy. Very gothic, very fancy. Yes, I like that. I like that very much. What's the best snack for movie night? Uh, as much as I love chocolate chip cookies, uh, popcorns. I like the popcorns. You want to get a pet. Which animal would suit you best? An independent pet that I can spend time with from the comfort of my home. Hold on a second. Why is this? Why does this feel like it's lulling me into a false sense of security? Is there going to be a jump scare at the end of this? Ah! Fudge! Dang it! Ah! I knew it! 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 How did I- Hold on a second. Editor me. I need to recover. <laughs> well played. Well played. That was a good jump scare. That was a good jump scare. That was a very, very good setup jump scare. Dang it. Now I'm going to oogle you. 
I am looking at you disrespectfully. What the flip are you doing? Ah! Don't startle me like that, dude. Careful who you're yelling at. If I was the manager, you'd be in big trouble now. What, for reading a magazine? I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, sir. Hm, as if you're not causing me enough trouble already. I mumble these words as my lips curl into a pout. My eyes fall on the glass that I accidentally knocked over, its contents drenching the entire magazine, making the answers harder to read now. Groaning, I duck down, grab a paper towel from the lower shelf, and use it to wipe the counter. Then I dab at the juice stains on every page. What's that? A personality quiz? That smile is gonna get you married, I mean in trouble! Sir, do you even have a personality you can speak of? Hmm. I frown and glare at the quiz, instantly regretting having taken it at all. And you're still using a fountain pen, huh? How old-fashioned. God, I'm already so tired of listening to his voice right now, tired of not being able to enjoy things in his presence, and tired of him making me shrink each time his mocking gaze grazes me. I let out a small, involuntary gasp when I see the torn page. Oh, poopy. I guess my dabs have been a little too aggressive, and it has nothing to do with Rasmus. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Just throw it away already. You're not here to laze about anyway. There's enough for you to do, even if we don't have any customers right now. No, I'm not going to say I'm sorry, but I don't want him to leave either. Is that why you're bothering me? Is that why you're bothering me, or do you actually need something? I was about to tell you that I'm leaving, but the shelves in the second row seem to be awfully dusty today. Better take care of that, or no day off for you. I just cleaned them yesterday. But as always, my objection falls on deaf ears. Oh, and I won't take any calls while I'm busy lounging in a hammock by the pool, drinking my cocktail. How dare you, sir. So you're going to a pool party? Yep, but losers like you aren't invited. Shocking. What makes him think I would want to be invited anyway? Who knows what kind of people he hangs out with, and what he's like when he's drunk. <laughs> God, I hope he gets a nice hangover. Then at least I'd have a break from his constant belittling and criticism, which has become too frequent for my liking lately. He grabs his small backpack and flings it over his shoulder. Be grateful that I trust you enough with these keys. Make sure everything is locked and secured. You know the drill. See you tomorrow. And I've been putting up with your crap since day one. You're the one who should be thankful. <laughs> but I keep that part to myself and dismiss him with a wave of my hand, grumbling. Yeah, in front of your stupid party. <laughs> the store bell chimes as he pushes the door open, taking all of the stress and tension I have felt for the last two hours with him. <laughs> Hate to see him go, but I like to watch him leave. <laughs> booty. My reflection in the window brightens up as soon as I hear the roar of his motorbike, accompanied by a Latin summer song that is now playing from the store's ceiling speaker. Ooh. Ooh, this sounds good. This sounds hot. I like this. As the sound of his engine fades to a distant rumble, I stretch my arms above my head to feel less like taut violin strings and hum softly to the song. Finally, some well-deserved peace and quiet. Now, before you jump scare me again, I have a feeling that this is where things are going to start going downhill. Hmm. I just hope no one causes any serious trouble now that I'm alone. Hey, I don't know if anybody's listening, but uh, convenience stores should always have at least three people in them. At all times. Ugh. The headlines about gang raids targeting small shops are always on my mind when darkness falls across the city. I wonder if cashiers like me will soon have to be armed for emergencies like that. No, stop thinking about this. There's no point in feeding your anxiety now. Just enjoy the music and focus on your tasks, Espoir. Although the AC is running smoothly now, my dry throat craves more cold liquid, so I leave the counter to refill my empty glass in the break room. 
I take the sticky magazine with me to throw it with all the other garbage in the containers at the staff entrance. As soon as I'm back inside, the nice music is interrupted by news reports of an unknown serial killer. Uh-oh. Approximately between July 3rd and August 11th, a serial killer murdered and dismembered in Kulma District at least 12 victims, only three of which could be positively identified. Twelve brutal killings in almost six weeks, and the police has neither clues nor suspects. We ask you to keep your eyes and ears open and report any crimes, suspicious behavior, safety concerns, and medical emergencies. It is also recommended not to walk alone at night and to leave your workplace early to be home at a safer, reasonable time. God, this is awful. I feel myself getting emotional as I imagine the grief the victims' families are going through right now, as if these violent gangs causing havoc wasn't enough. I turn off the radio when I hear another announcer begin to elaborate on the killer's methods. A chill runs down my spine as I look around the deserted shop, suddenly feeling very exposed here by myself. Mm -hmm. I shake my head, trying to drive away the images of my own death. I wonder if Rasmus has heard about this news as well. If he did, I don't think he would have left me here all by myself, wouldn't he? I don't even know if the Colma district is close to where I live. I never had time to fully explore the city after moving, and... My train of thought breaks away by the sudden arrival of customers, making me rush to the checkout. I only recognize one of them as a new regular. However, he's not what I would call profitable. Quite often, he just looks around and leaves without buying anything. Even Rasmus finds it odd and told me to keep a close eye on him. Though, whenever he notices my gaze, he seems to feel compelled to strike up a conversation with me. Like now. Oh, uh, uh, Hi. He fiddles with the hem of his shirt and has a hard time maintaining eye contact with me. A bit unusual, but for now I'm glad I can talk to someone that isn't Rasmus. I put on my best smile and greet him cheerfully. Hello, sir. It's nice to see you again. How can I help you on this beautiful day? It, it really is a beautiful day, isn't it, Miss Espoir? Huh, that's new. I know I never introduced myself to him, so I guess he must have overheard my first name somewhere. And really hot, too. I, I hope you keep yourself hydrated. <laughs> He's trying really hard to make small talk with me, isn't he? But I'm in no mood to talk about something as boring as the weather, so I try to steer him back on topic. What brings you here today? I, I wanted to ask, um, do you... You know, maybe we could... I mean, I would like to... Uh... Oh. His shoulders sag as he utters a frustrated sigh. That's not how I practice it. Maybe I should... No. Sir, is everything all right? He chuckles. I'm such a coward. Oh, baby, oh. I couldn't understand his mumbling, but before I could even ask him to repeat what he said, he turns on his heel and leaves the store. Oh, well, that was weird. I'm baffled for several minutes, but decide that I should focus on the other customers instead of blaming myself for his sudden escape, as I usually do. I've never seen him so shy and awkward before. He didn't even ask about our products, but I'm sure he'll return. Most likely tomorrow. After all, everyone can have a bad day. Oh, it's dark outside now. As if on cue, my gaze wanders back to the window as night falls, and I'm embraced by loneliness once more. There's not much time left until my shift is over. What else should I do to shorten the waiting time? Let's see what's happening with the newspaper. <laughs> I usually avoid reading the newspaper with its clickbaity headlines, emotional tales, and political gossip, but maybe it has more information about where exactly these murders took place. I pick up the newspaper Rasmus brought and settle into a chair in the break room. I snap it open and my attention is instantly drawn to the pictures of the victims I find in its crinkled pages. Then my eyes drift to a small map with the crime scene circled. It seems to have only happened on the other side of town, which puts my mind at ease, for now. Still, I shouldn't count on him not continuing his killing spree in this neighborhood. 
<laughs> scared. I slam the cash register shut, lower the shutter doors, and activate the alarm system, determined to close the store an hour early today. It should be fine. We were assured that if we skipped an hour or two, we wouldn't get any pay cuts, and I'm sure the manager will forgive me if I make that decision without his permission this time. Because, you know, there's like a, a murderer on the streets, like, now. After making sure I hadn't forgotten anything, I shuffled toward the exit and into the night. Ooh, spooky. It's already pitch black outside, with only the voice of horns and the engine sound rhythmically complementing each other. Despite the poorly lit streets, I catch glimpses of other solitary individuals rushing in different directions. In the distance, I spot a group of four with one holding a bat and pointing at a vending machine. The next moment, the bat hits the machine with full force several times. The sound of glass cracking, groaning, and eventually breaking fills the nocturnal silence. I reach for the pepper spray I bought the other day, dangle it from my bag, and hold it firmly in my hand. But on second thought, I definitely don't want to cross paths with these people. They look like they're members of a gang, and who knows what they'll do if I become the focus of their attention. I wouldn't stand a chance against a whole group. I turn around and decide to take a shortcut through the alley I just walked past. That seems like an even worse idea. The alley itself is so narrow that I can stretch out my arms and touch the walls on either side. I feel the wind rushing through as I step into it, and hear it clutching ragged paper and twirling it in the air before dropping it. The flickering lights reveal various buildings towering over me like a forest made of stone. Intimidating, but it could be worse. I quicken my pace as peals of laughter ring out behind me. The voices of that group are getting too close for comfort now. Suddenly, a rustle comes from my left. My shoes scrape the surface of the concrete as I come to an abrupt halt. Wow. Kitty! Don't jump at me, kitty! I yelp in surprise as a cat sprints past me, growling. Jeez, that scared the living crap out of me. Seriously, is today scare us boy to death day? Don't you do it. Don't you jump scare me. I got caught off guard, now I'm on edge. I calm my breath and move forward, fully alert now. With each step, I notice an eerie silence settling in, and with that comes the feeling of being watched. I look around, but I don't spot anyone. I feel myself getting more anxious and impatient. This alley goes on forever. Eventually, the path leads me to a courtyard filled with pieces of junk and furniture. A sweet, fruity, floral scent descends from the few balcony boxes, but it mixes with the stench of the garbage littering the ground. At least there's one of those valospheres. Its light is so powerful it can withstand any storm, so I don't have to worry about it suddenly going out. Cool. Mm. I'm startled once more as my foot hits an empty tin can, making me stop dead in my tracks again. It bounces twice, rolls along the bumpy ground, gaining some speed and then melting into one with the darkness. My ears perk up when the metallic sound abruptly stops, presumably hitting a wall. Or someone. <laughs> I stand there frozen, watching in horror, as the same can rolls back towards me, almost playfully. I force my feet to take a step back, then another. My eyes strain into the black mass before me, trying to make out a shape or silhouette of whatever is hiding there. Just as I dismiss it as just another cat, a male voice rings out, mocking and sinister. Man, you must have scored pretty high on those... How dumb are you quizzes, eh? You know, walking around here alone at night and meeting... me. Oh no! A spooky! No! Holy frijoles! With a shaky hand, I draw my pepper spray and aim it at what I think is the spot where he's standing. D don't come any closer. I'm not afraid to use this. A deep chuckle escapes his throat. Ah, I know that brand. Not very effective. Ah! I sometimes use it to flavor my meals. <laughs> Flip! This guy is a bad apple. 
He's a tough guy. Welcome to the salty spittoon. How tough are you? I use pepper spray to season my meals. <laughs> my body reacted immediately to the fear screaming at me to run, so I started to sprint back the way I came from, amazed that my legs cooperated with such ease. I certainly won't wait to see if that guy is bluffing or not, nor will I waste a single thought on whether he's the infamous serial killer. If he has done this a hundred times, or if he's a first-timer. I, I, I get the feeling he's pretty experienced, whoever he is. He found me, of all people, and all I could do now was to run, because there literally might be no tomorrow for me. Mm. I'm stopped by a thrown knife that barely misses and lands right in front of me, thwarting my plan to run back. Eep! Oh no! I dash into the only other narrow passage available to my left, which I knew would take me further away from home and the police station. Ooh, and I bet he knows that as well. Mm. Adrenaline pulses through my veins, the summer air burns in my lungs, and the only sound that echoes from the walls is our shoes thudding rhythmically against the ground. My brain goes into overdrive, creating images of all the things that could go wrong and ideas of how to possibly survive this flippin' nightmare. I run around the next corner, passing another apartment complex, and yell for help, hoping that a resident with an open window would hear the terror in my voice. But all I get is a bottle being thrown against the wall right above my head and an angry female voice yelling back. Shut the flip up! People are sleeping! Yeah, well, somebody's gonna be dying. Pretty soon. <laughs> Lady, enjoy your rest. <laughs> what? The actual flip. Did she just throw a bottle at me? <laughs> I hear my pursuer giggling behind me. That mother flipper. That maternal fraternizer. <laughs> God, I wish I had the strength to strangle him. At least my anger at these two a-holes fuels my speed for a bit. Being trapped in this labyrinth of pitch-black alleys with no help at all makes me feel more alone than the sound of my own shallow breathing. But a glance over my shoulder confirms I'm not alone. <laughs> I have this feeling that he wouldn't stop until he caught me, and I was dead, even if I managed to run or hide somewhere safe. Alright, time for plan B. I frantically feel around in my bag from my phone. A short, lasting relief washes over me when my hand finally hits the cold metal block. I grab it and push two buttons to call Rasmus. Ring, ring. Come on, pick up, please. Hey, you've reached my voicemail. You better leave your name, number, and a gosh darn reason why this conversation couldn't be done over text. <laughs> P.S. If this is a matter of life and death, it will likely be resolved by morning. <laughs> Gosh. Mailed. I can't believe this. Flippin' booty hole. Ow. Ah! I lose my footing and the grip on my phone when I suddenly slip on something that smells like pickled zucchini and garlic, causing me to fall straight into my butt. No, not my butt! A sharp stabbing pain shoots through my tailbone. Ooh. He's getting closer. I moan with every painful movement I make. Mailed! I'm running out of time here. I need to get up. And closer. I turn around, crawling to reach my phone that landed a few feet away from me, still hoping I could get up fast enough to call the police instead. Just when my fingertips are about to touch the device. Too close. Oh no! I got gotted! I get gotted! Don't get me! I scream when he steps on my hand and deliberately shifts all his weight to his left foot to keep it jammed. The pain is excruciating. He's crushing my fingers. I struggle to get free, but to no avail. My whole body feels like lead weights are attached to me now. I can barely move. I look at him with gritted teeth and fear flooding my eyes. That's it. I'm going to die here. I'm going to flip and die. What a promising start. You and I, we're going to have so much fun together. <laughs> Ow! How? Dare you. End of day one. Thanks for playing our demo. We hope you enjoyed it. I very much did. I very much did. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that was fun. That was fun. Okay, first of all, this whole world that it's in, it's gorgeous, it's absolutely beautiful. The artwork is beautiful, all the characters are super interesting and cool looking. Reading that, I was actually flipping scared. <laughs> like, oh no, there's a dude behind me! Oh wait, no, I'm just in my room behind a green screen. Oh, I'm excited for this one. This one's gonna be fun. This one's gonna be a lot of fun. But hold on, there's a whole lot more I can do! <laughs> Why me? Do I look like a technician? <laughs> he rolls with his eyes as I drink my juice in almost one gulp, followed by a grimace shooting across my face. <laughs> Woohoo, brain freeze! No, you look like an idiot who keeps forgetting that I'm in charge here. Just do as you're told and fix the darn thing. What if I can't fix it? Then you can watch me walk out of here. There's no way in heck I'll stay here for hours to let myself be cooked. Oh my god, you're such a diva. <laughs> what did you just say? You heard me. There are other ways to cool off here, and you should help me if you want the AC to properly work again. Supervising you? Sure, I can do that. So I'm gonna have to ask you to stop smiling like that. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> no, I'm not asking for supervision. Well, we don't always get what we want. Your gratitude included. Now move, Espoir. Mm. God, why is it so hard for him to help people, is what I would like to ask him, but I bite my tongue and follow him quietly, frustrated with myself for letting him treat me like a gosh darn doormat all the time. How dare you, sir! After changing into my work clothes and shutting off the power to the cooling system, I struggled with the removal of thick ice layers and freed the coil from dirt and dust, while Rasmus was supervising me. I started whistling a song to drown out all his comments about me being clumsy and lacking any skill. Unfortunately, this was not a side most customers got to see. Phew, that's a job well done. Thanks. I was talking to myself. Hm, <laughs> whatever. It could have been done much quicker if you weren't all fingers and thumbs. He glances at the clock on the wall, then back at me. Anyway, you better go back to the counter now. I'll check our inventory in the meantime. Are you leaving? Are you leaving now? Not that I'm complaining. I do need a break from him, but he knows as well as I do that we're not allowed to work alone anymore. You'll be fine on your own. And the manager agrees? He pauses for a moment, pondering what to say. Not yet, but he will later on. If you say so. I'll see you later after I'm kidnapped and murdered because you left me alone, guy. Thanks a lot. Don't miss me too much when I'm lounging in a hammock by a pool sipping my cocktail. You're going to a pool party? That's so not fair. Quit whining and be grateful that I trust you enough with these keys. Make sure everything is locked up and secured, you know the drill. I'll call you later to check up on you. I grumble to myself. All right, take care, Raz. Yep, yeah, but... What, what would I daydream about? Lost in thought, I drum my fingers on the counter while a sudden memory starts playing in my head like a movie. I see my friends from middle school who gifted me a drum set for my 15th birthday and taught me how to play. Like most teenagers, we were chasing the dream of becoming a world-famous band, and indeed, with the help of our families, we soon had all our own instruments and a soundproof basement to practice in. Feeling nostalgic, I take two candy canes from a box that are sold year-round and start hitting on various items to create some funny beats. Oh, I've been told that I was a good listener, had a good sense of rhythm and timing, so teenage me practiced for years to become one of the best drummers one day. Every night, I would fall asleep listening to my favorite bands, imagining this was our first concert, pretending I was playing and crying tears of joy at the end. But like so many other things in our lives, these dreams didn't last. Nah. Oh, hello. Your hair. It looks delicious. <laughs> I gasp, and the candy canes drop to the floor. Oh, God, you startled me. How did I not notice him? And why didn't I hear the store bell? Have I been that deep in thought? Or are you a g g, -g ghost I... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Nah, it's alright. I should have paid more attention. It's part of my job, after all. 
Though, I didn't expect to have another customer right before closing time, either. <laughs> My laugh comes out awkward and strangled. I'm so embarrassed he's seen me like that. I usually shop at a different store, but I only found out today that they had to shut down. That's why I came here instead. I'm sorry for any inconvenience I'm causing you now. Oh, don't worry about it. You're not causing any inconvenience at all. This is a convenience store, after all. We sell convenience. You know, I really enjoyed your performance. Watching you cheered me up a little. Oh. Thank you. I'm glad it did. But I would appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone about this, okay? It's embarrassing. He nods, understandably. No problem. But are you sure I shouldn't bring my piano next time? My eyes crinkle in amusement. You can play piano? I used to play it a lot when I was younger and less jaded. I'm certain I've gotten quite rusty by now. <laughs> what made you stop? The question makes him pause for a moment. Hmm, <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I wasn't feeling it anymore. Well, maybe now is the time to take it up again. I mean, that way you can save yourself from seeing wacky performances from your local cashier and me from a heart attack. <laughs> he laughs. Oh no, he's got an adorable smile too. But wacky performances have their own charm. And I don't plan to repeat my late night shopping, not to mention sneaking up on you. Pinky promise. Uh, what a relief. Thank you. Well then... Ah, not wanting to keep him any longer from paying for his purchase, I started scanning his items. Do you want to buy anything else? He points to the box with the candy canes. I would like to try one of these. Sure, it's a new peppermint variety filled with ruby chocolate. Ooh, sounds good. Thank you for your purchase. Enjoy the rest of your evening and please come again. No piano, though. Huh. <laughs> Thanks, um, miss. He looks at my name tag, which only reveals my last name to him. You can call me Espoir. Ah, thanks, Espoir. I'm Damon. It was nice talking to you. Maybe one day you'll hear my music through these speakers instead. That would be nice. See you next time. I like Damon. He's cool. And with that, he leaves the store. I wave him goodbye, happy to finally be able to enjoy the end of my workday. I slam the cash register shut, pick up the two broken candy canes, lower the shutter doors, and activate the alarm system, all while still thinking about that killer. I wonder if he's out there now, looking for new victims. Would a shortcut home be too risky? I got myself pepper spray the other day, but I also learned that there are... Holy cow. Huevari? Ooh. That there are Huevari who are immune to it. Maybe a gun would be a better choice after all. I bet Rasmus never has to worry about such things. Being born with no special powers really sucks in situations like this. However, it might help if I ask permission to close the store an hour early tomorrow. That's a very Nokia-sounding ringtone. Right. I remember. Rasmus wanted to check up on me. I hurry back to the break room, not bothering to turn on the light. You turn on that light! You turn on that light! I fish my phone out of my bag and squint at the bright screen lighting up my face, displaying... <laughs> poo poo head. <laughs> poo poo head. <laughs> I laugh at the nickname. A well-deserved one for that. But do I really want to talk to this moron now? Yeah, what's, what's, what you got? What's, what's going on? I took the call and could tell by his colorful, bouncy voice that he was buzzed on alcohol. The party noise in the background made it difficult to hear him, but unfortunately he was short with me. I confirmed that everything was fine, that I was heading home, and that he had nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. After we said goodbye, my heavy feet shuffled towards the exit and into the night. Mm -hmm. Oh no! How dare you, sir? Well, there's that ending.